Welcome to day two of lesson 15 and today we want to talk about the Lord of the Rings. So all of you Tolkien fans, that should be exciting for you to incorporate this into your English class. So some of this information isn't new, but um, you may not be aware of some of it about J.R.R. Tolkien. When he was a child, he heard the other kids in his neighborhood speaking a made-up language called Animalic. Tolkien contributed to the neighborhood's next imaginary language, Nevbosh, or New Nonsense, and this fascination with languages became a lifelong obsession, leading eventually to the a position as Merton Professor of English, Language and Literature at Oxford, concentrating on philosophy. Tolkien spent most of his free time inventing Ferre languages. Quenya is reminiscent of Finnish, Sindarian or Sindarin of Welsh. And as he crafted these languages, Tolkien had a singular revelation. For a language to be real, it has to consistently reflect a cultural perspective or the story of a culture. So in other words, a real language both implies and demands a myth. He published The Hobbit in 1936 and Lord of the Rings in 1948. Both were written in service to Tolkien's imaginary languages and he was frustrated that most people assumed the reverse. In an article explaining his obsession called A Secret Vice, Tolkien wrote, the making of language and mythology are related functions. Your language construction will breed a mythology. Well, it's kind of interesting to think he started with this language and then he wrote um, the story or the, the mythology from that. Tolkien's work was a modestly successful guilty pleasure in academic circles for over a decade. Professors and students were reluctant to admit how much they loved a story about a silly elf and dragon stuff. It wasn't until an American publisher illegally published a cheap edition in paperback that Tolkien's work finally reached the mainstream. By the mid-1960s, The Lord of the Rings was probably the most highly regarded and influential fantasy story in the Western world, occupying the same position as Star Wars does today and Wagner's ring cycle did towards the end of the 19th century. Um, with the release of a new movie in 2000 and then other ones to follow, The Lord of the Rings has made a remarkable comeback in popularity and is pretty familiar to most people nowadays. Lucas has often cited Lord of the Rings as a major influence on Star Wars and here's just some of the striking similarities between the movies. So in Star Wars, we have Yoda. In Lord of the Rings, we have Golem, who is a greenish raggedy midget with a habit of putting his verbs at the end of a sentence. Star Wars, we have lightsabers, and there are magic swords in Lord of the Rings. We have Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars and Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. Princess Leia in Star Wars. Galadriel in Lord of the Rings, Darth Vader in Star Wars, Samaram the Black Rider in Lord of the Rings, Emperor Palpatine in Star Wars, and Sauron in Lord of the Rings. I feel like I might be butchering some of these names. Obi-Wan digs Anakin's lightsaber out of an old wood wooden box and gives it to Luke in Star Wars. In Lord of the Rings, Bilbo give, digs his magic sword out of an old wooden box and gives it to Frodo. In Star Wars, Darth cuts off Luke's hand, which plunges into the abyss with Luke's lightsaber. In Lord of the Rings, Golem bites off Frodo's finger, which plunges into the abyss with one ring. I should have maybe said at the start, I should have said, see what you can think of as similarities between the two before I tell you all of them. But alas, I did not. In Star Wars, Yoda foretells the future and Luke must decide whether to help his friends out or not. Yoda warns that he's seen only one possible future. And in Lord of the Rings, Galadriel foretells the future and Sam must decide whether to help his friends or not. Galadriel warns that she's only seen one possible future. Darth tries to convince Luke to join the dark side, thereby bringing order to the galaxy in Star Wars, in Lord of the Rings. Sarah Moon, I can't say that word properly, Sarah 
Seryu Man, Seryu Man, tries to convince Gandalf to join the evil wizards, thereby bringing order to Middle Earth. I obviously haven't seen the movie Lord of the Rings, or I maybe could pronounce these names better. Mundane name and special name, Ben and Obi-Wan in Star Wars, and Lord of the Rings mundane name and special name, Strider and Aragorn. Uh, in Star Wars, Mysterious Figure throws back Hood of Robe to reveal he's Obi-Wan. And in Lord of the Rings, Mysterious Figure throws back Hood of Robe to reveal that he's Gandalf. Luke, I shouldn't have come. I'm endangering the mission. Because Darth can sense him in Lord of the Rings. Glorfindel, it's, it is you, Frodo, and that which you bear that brings us into peril. Because Sauron can sense the One Ring in Lord of the Rings. Luke watches from across a chasm as Obi-Wan duels with Darth Vader using blue and, right, light, blue and red lightsabers in Star Wars. And in Lord of the Rings, Frodo watches from across a chasm as Gandalf duels with Balrog using blue and red flaming magic swords. Skywalker's not alone in his journey. Han Solo, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, CP, C-3PO, and R2-D2 in Star Wars and in Lord of the Rings, Frodo is not alone. The Fellowship of the Ring. Or he's not alone on his journey. All right, so there's some questions in your <clears throat> assignment on Lord of the Rings today and some comparison to with Star Wars. So I don't think I'm gonna do a video for day three. So there's some notes in your, or some review notes um, that you can look over. And you need to review lessons 13, 14, and 15 to prepare for your quiz. And you should take your quiz tomorrow. But it's open book, so it's not a, not too big a deal. Um, and there's some things on Legends, parent, Parody, Jaren's, um, Miguel de Cervantes, Saavedra, Don Quixote, Alfred Lord Tennyson, Morte Arthur, The Sword in the Stone, Epic Star Wars, and The Lord of the Rings. So then you can review for day three, and then on day four, you may complete your open book test. And then that is the end of week 15 for English 10-1. And next week, you're going to be looking at Les Miserables. So hopefully, you've been able to um, watch the BBC production on um, PBS. It started on April 14th. This is of 2019 on the Sunday night and should be following through for the next five weeks on Sunday nights. So through pretty much till May long weekend, I think. So hopefully you can watch that and uh, enjoy that production. There's lots of musicals that have been made of Les Miserables, but not as many plays, and so it's nice to see. Um, I did send you an article from the World Magazine as well that kind of does a review and maybe it's just some points or places to watch for that you might want um, a parent to be aware of, of some of the things that are shown, but just to be aware of kind of what's, what's in it a little bit, that there's some things that might be objectionable, but nothing is really ever shown it's just implied so anyway have a good rest of the week and i hope you do well on your open book quiz